Okay, so I've found another multiple game emulator for the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, and it's called Batacera Linux, and uh, it's it's actually very good. It looks very much like RetroPie uh, when you see it, and uh, I don't know if it's based on that, but uh, they, they don't make any mention of that, and certainly some of the menus and things uh, and, and various things that you do with it are different, but it also comes with, I think it's 11 games, um, so to download it, click on download, and then scroll down until you see Pi 4. You can see it's available for loads of different systems. It's a beta version on Pi 4, so it's obviously only more recently come to it. So click on the download, and uh, I won't download that because I've already got it. So with your downloaded image, just write it with Belena Etcher or Raspberry Pi Imager. You don't need to unzip it or anything. You just write it straight to the SD card and then pop it in your Pi. Uh, I've also got a 32 gig stick. Now this stick has uh, is the one I use for RetroPie, and I was figuring that I could use the same ROMs uh, because I also use it for RetroArch as well, and it works fine. Uh, but with Batacera, it doesn't recognize these ROMs, won't find them. Uh, what you have to do is put your USB stick in to Batacera, boot it up, and it will create this folder uh, and all of these folders. And obviously where you put your ROMs is the ROMs folder. Uh, and so you can see if I go into PSP, you can see that I've got a couple of ROMs in there. Uh, and what I like about it as well is in each folder, it tells you what format they support. So if I go on this one, info text, you can see ROM files, extensions accepted, ISO, CSO, PPP. So you don't need to mess about with trying anything else. So on the PlayStation 1, it even reads ordinary zip files, uh, zip files and 7-zip are on there. And I've overclocked this, so this is my SD card. So I've changed Force 1080, uh, which is what I do on most of my builds because it helps with my screen capture, uh, but also helps performance. And also I've overclocked to 2147, which is as high as the Pi will go. So let's take both of those out and pop them in my Pi. Okay, so this is how it boots up. And as you can see, very similar to a default skin on RetroPi, but it is a little different. So if I press start on the menus, uh, you can see the top option there. We've got game settings. Uh, I see all of these are certainly slightly different. You can see that achievements is also built in as well. You can link that. I haven't played around with any of these. Uh, I see smooth games auto. So that might be a way of speeding things up to turn that off on different systems. Uh, but let's go to controller settings. It controls similar to RetroPie, um, but a few different ways of putting that you don't have to do all the joystick uh, controls and it still recognizes everything. So uh, UI settings, you can see there's themes, same as there is on other things. And in fact, the, the theme, the carbon theme is something that you see in RetroPie. So maybe people just port it for different systems. Game collection settings, sound settings, network settings, and so on. Updates and downloads, so you can see there's check for updates. I've just checked earlier on and there isn't any at the moment. Uh, system settings, so you can see what version this is, 5.26. Raspberry Pi 4. It says overclock none, this isn't changeable but I have overclocked 2147 uh, by, by changing the config text, as I mentioned at the start. And storage, uh, I changed this to uh, any external. Now that's my USB stick, but any external seems to be uh, a good way of doing it. So what I was explaining before, so you need to start up the system and then restart it with the USB stick and it will create those folders. So let's show you what comes free in it as standard. So it doesn't come with any PSP or PlayStation games. Super Nintendo, it came with this classic Kong. I quite like the way the appearance is like a tube TV, a CRT TV. And it says that all the games that come with it are open source, which is good. So you get the idea with Donkey Kong. Let's just see if I can make it to the top. There we go, certainly easier than the arcade version of Donkey Kong. Now, if you press, uh, I'm using an Xbox 360 wired controller. If you press home, select and start at the same time, it quits out. There you go. And so if I press B to go back, if we go to, uh, now I put an Amiga game on there, um, but it wasn't working. 
uh, and this has worked in, uh, I had Raspbian with, I can't remember which, but it was a, a, an Amiga emulator and it worked fine on that, uh, but it just kept saying insert a disc. Commodore 64 came with two games, so let's try the Mario one. The iconic startup. Okay, I don't know how long you have to wait for that, but it didn't seem to be working. Again, this is a beta, uh, so let's go back. Dreamcast, it doesn't come with anything. Game Boy Advance, it did come with this, Space Twins. Oh, and again, a really nice skin for Game Boy Advance. A clever way to, of doing this because it means you get the right screen ratio, but also it looks nice as well. There we go, I guess we have to get the... Oh. <laughs> Not what I'm doing there. Oh, just press A, maybe? Okay, maybe I'd have to read about what to do with that. So, Mega Drive, it comes with old towers. Looks like some sort of climbing game. It seems to be nice and responsive. Got a bit of a Pac-Man feel to it, but it's super quick. Uh, Nintendo 64, didn't come with anything. These are all ones I've put in. And I'm gonna come back to some of these systems. Uh, NES comes with 2048, I won't try that. PC Engine comes with Santalantian and uh, Reflection. So I thought Reflection looked interesting. Oh, okay, so you, it looks like you have to move to where your, the reflected image is. Yeah. There you go. So if you like a shooting game. And then ports. Now these looked interesting. So we've got Doom, we've got a Bomberman clone uh, in Mr. Boom, and we've also got Quake. So let's go with Quake. So the controller looks like it's working. New game. <laughs> It's, not, it's nicer with the mouse. But you can see that the speed is fine. All the sound is fine and everything else. So yeah, another good one. So let's show the games that I've added into it. So PlayStation Portable. Uh, let's go with Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, and some of these ROMs uh, I put on there from uh, Damaso's build of, uh, it's the Nostalgia Trip, the 128 gig. Uh, build that I had and, it, and they were some of the games maybe didn't play as well in that build and I figured oh what, how would it be to to get them into another operating system and uh, another emulator and see how they ran and uh, I found an interesting way of doing it but I'll do that in another video but access to all the ROMs or the BIOS files and then you can use them in RetroArch, RetroPie, you know whichever one is your choice. So this is interesting because this is a first person shooter on PSP and the PSP's only got one uh, joystick. So the buttons on the right hand side look around and the left hand side runs. So you can, you see up and down. So this would be Y and A for me on an Xbox controller. Uh, and then, I can't remember what fire was. Oh. So left button fires. So it seems to run all right. Oh, that's ammo I'm picking up, the hell is Something was in there. But it's responsive enough. Oh, <laughs> I'm missing him. Oh, taken out. And that was with no configuration that ran really well. So PlayStation, um, the controller's not working for me. So I tried several different games. I don't think I've tried Driver yet. Um, but uh, the intro started up well and nice and fast on Tekken and Toka Touring Car, but uh, I, I thought it was crashing, but actually it's, uh, it's just because the controller doesn't seem to be configured. So you see the game starts up all right, and you think everything's working. And I, I couldn't remember if it was that you couldn't skip the intro in Tekken, but uh, yeah, it turns out that there is no controller support. So all of this I can't skip by, but everything was looking fine. 
So I'll come back to that in another video. So the other one to try is Dreamcast. So the Dreamcast ROM I got from Damaso's Nostalgia Trip and uh, I thought I'd give that a try on this system to see how well it ran. Certainly the display looks decent. Dreamcast is, is well emulated on the Pi. Oh, I don't have to do any... Sometimes you have to do jumping through hoops on game saves. It looks like it's going to be all right on this. Yeah, looks like it's all configured. Oh, but it looks a bit slow. Oh, it's a bit jerky. Again, this is a beta, uh, and so things can improve. Yeah, it's proper, proper jerky with the controls. Can I use the do? Oh, I'm in the car. Let's go back. Oh. Oh, not good. Yeah, so that needs a bit of bit of work, I would say. So interesting to have another option for emulating games. Uh, it's it's just really good to see. They support loads of different systems on this, and it is in beta, uh, and it also does update the software on its own, and it's free. So download it and try it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.